Okay, so we've completed the first part of the Shakespeare book. We've now done the, uh, the introductory pages with the prelim and um, a small part of the table of contents. Now it's time to work on the play. So first step, we need to get the template for the play. Now, um, you will already have this template. It's called play.indt. And uh, I'm just going to double click on it now and it should open up InDesign and fire up InDesign with the with the page. Now the template itself is exactly the same size, of course, as the um, the, the template for the introductory pages, because we're going to eventually merge these two things together. Um, but there are some differences, um, and I'm just going to uh, let InDesign fire up, and then I shall show you. Okay, so here's the template then. Um, I've loaded up uh, the template and as you can see, it's slightly different from what we're used to. So this is what I need to explain about the way that this template is working. The difference is that over on the left hand side, we have a, a panel and this is called the structure pane. Um, in fact, it's just the template is saved with this view uh, showing, you know, but um, we don't necessarily have to uh, have to show it. It's just uh, obviously as we're working on this, this is this is what we're going to need. Um, the other thing about this is that it has got already uh, a document type definition that's a DTD in embedded in it, um, and this is what I'm going to show you by double clicking on that. You can see that this is the this is the doc type or the DTD, and it's basically um, showing us the structure of the play. So. It's very important that when you're using XML in combination with InDesign that you uh, you have, um, if you like, the, the correct structure within InDesign ready to accept the XML. And what we're actually seeing here is the set of rules um, for this XML document that we're going to place in. So you can see, we look at the, uh, the, the way that it's set out here. Um, Shakespeare play, of course, is what we've got. Then we've got two parts to that. We've got the Dramatis Personae and the play itself. And then within the Dramatis Personae, we have certain things like the, um, the, the Dramatis head, which is just the, the heading. And then each of the characters, as you know, the Dramatis Personae just basically lists the characters in the play with what their role is. Um, the play itself um, also a little bit more complicated because there we have the scene and the acts, the stage directions, uh, the speech, the character name, the verse, the prose. All of these things um, have to actually have uh, have to be in the play. Um, some of them are optional. So sometimes, uh, for example, we have song in the in, in in some plays but not in others so uh, this is optional as you'll see so I have um, you know got some explanations about further explanations about the structure of the play uh, which is fine but this particular um, video I'm really just showing you how you bring in the XML into this template okay so having looked at that let's just click done there's just one other thing that we perhaps ought to have a look at and you'll find that under window utilities tags now the tags are also in here because they are part of this DTD you won't really have come across tags before or you know, in your work within design, of course, but tags are effectively um, the labels that are going to be used to identify the certain components within the play. There's one other important thing, uh, actually, and that's really just to do with this template. Now, we're not asking you to do all of this work, so it's really a, a, a very important decision that has to be made by a publisher is that you basically create a template in InDesign which has all of these features built into it. And you'll see that the tags actually relate, and I'm going to now show it to you, they relate to the paragraph styles. Um, so actually the acts, sorry, the tags, the tags have the same names as the, 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 the paragraph styles, as you can see over here. That's actually quite important for, for the work that we're going to do. So let me just put these things back. And yeah, 
put those back. Okay, that just makes it a little bit tidier. We don't really need to see the, the tags either, particularly, so I'm gonna turn that off. Okay, so what we are going to do then is we're going to import the XML. Now we can actually do that uh, from, uh, from two places. We can either go to file and then actually import from here, or the other way of doing it is just from this context menu within the um, structure panel. Either way, it doesn't really matter. They're both the same. Um, and so we're just going to select this and then actually then um, use import XML to bring this in. So we're now looking in our folder where we've got all the text of the place. Now you will have downloaded all of the assets. And one of the things that you'd have, you would have had is a folder called text of the plays. I'm looking at that now. You're, you're going to obviously choose your play, the play that you're working with. I'm working with Midsummer Night's Dream, so I'm going to choose that. Now you can see down at the bottom how we've got um, these various options. You shouldn't really need to change this. We just want to show the XML import options for interest only. Um, and merge content should also automatically be ticked on. So I'm going to click Open. And then you will see this, uh, this option panel. But again, you don't need to change anything because by default, this should be exactly as we need it. If you change something, then I can't guarantee the same results. Uh, so make sure that you don't adjust anything in here. So now we're gonna click OK. OK, now mysteriously enough, we don't see anything on the page. So this is, the, this is unlike before where we placed text directly onto the page. This time we're importing it. And as you can maybe see, I didn't mean to do that, over see, see over here in the structure panel, how you can see that you've now got a little uh, triangle next to the Shakespeare play. And if we click on that, you'll see we've then got the structure of the play. Not only has the title come in, your, play, your XML should have that information for your own play. Um, you should then have a Dramatis Personae. And as you can see, this is the basics of it here. You can see the structure of it. Um, and then let's just shrink that back down again. And then the play itself, which of course is quite substantial, so it might take a little while to, for, the, for that to come up. So this is the play in its structural form. So you may be able to see here, we've got the act, the first scene, the location, etc. All of those things are then in embedded in now into the structure. So let's just, uh, again, we don't need to show that uh, all the time. Now, the way this works is that we now need to get that content onto the page. And the way we do that, just and I will show you at any moment now, it's just a matter of dragging and dropping it. But what I want to indicate to you though, before and it gets, it's something to do with the template. Um, the template has already got uh, the elements, that is the text frames ready to accept this content. So if you look here, and I just select this text frame here, you can see that it's threaded and has two frames or over two um, pages. And if we look at this text frame in the, uh, the, the, the object styles, you'll see that it has an object style called Dramatis Personae. If I go to the third page and select this frame, this has a, a, an object style called Play. You don't need to worry about too much about the attributes for the object uh, style or anything like that, but it, the point is it's named in that way. Now, um, what we need to do is we need to drag the content from the structure panel and plop that down onto the page. So first of all, the Dramatis Personae. So we just click on that, make sure we've selected it, click and hold with the mouse, drag it across and let it go into that frame. And as you can see, it just drops the content into, uh, into, into that frame. It goes over two pages. Um, yours might not go over two pages or it might, it might be much longer or much shorter than mine, doesn't matter. The point is that is there now as the content. It's the first step, doesn't look like anything particularly at the moment, as you will see. Now we're gonna go into the third page, which is the beginning of the play proper. So the Dramatis Personae, Persona is, is in on the first two pages. Now what we need to do is to drag the play onto that text box. 
Now that might take a little bit of time, but that should have built up pages automatically and created many, many, many pages to accept the, uh, the play. Okay, so that's brought the content onto the page. However, it doesn't really look anything in particular. It certainly doesn't look like how we want it to look. So how do we now attach the styles that we've got in our play uh, into those areas of the, of the text that's on the page? Well, we, again, we go to this context menu up here and you need to go into, we, what we're gonna do is to map the tags to these styles. So we've got the tags, as I showed you the tags panel, we've got the tags and that's come in through the DTD. So the tags are defined in the DTD. And then what we're going to do is to map those tags to the styles. Now, when I click on this panel, you'll see here that we can, and it is, has sometimes happens in, in, in work that you're doing, that you can uh, select a, a tag and then map it to a particular style. But fortunately for us, fortunately for you, what we've done is we've named the paragraph styles the same as the tags, tags having come from the DTD. I hope that makes sense. So all we need to do is to click map by name. Then you can probably see now, if I look at this, uh, this list here, I'll just make it a little bit bigger for you, as you can see that the tag called act is mapped to the style called act and so on. Tag first scene is tag two, is, is styled with the first scene and so on. So all of these things are, are mapped together. The only thing that isn't mapped, and that's uh, the only problem with, well, not the only problem with InDesign, there are lots of problems with it, but this is one annoying feature, is that it doesn't actually map the, uh, the object styles, that is the text frame itself. It doesn't map that. Okay, I'm gonna click okay and you'll see certain things begin to happen. It usually takes a while because of course your play is very long. I mean Hamlet is the longest uh, I would imagine so that's going to take quite some time. So we might just wait for that to happen. Okay so this has now um, worked except that um, one thing we notice is that it's actually started on a new page so here we have the Dramatis Personae, and then we have that on two pages, as, as it is not unexpected. And then again, um, this part of it has actually started on a new page. Um, there is a reason for that, but um, we don't need to worry too much about that. The point is that the content is all in here, uh, and you can see if we just scroll through, you've, you've actually got uh, stage directions, names of characters, uh, all, of the, all of the text is now in here. But, but, and this is the important thing, is that all of this now has to be styled. You, you now need to make your decision about how you want this to look. Um, and you also need to, um, you know, obviously eventually we need to join this to the, to the, uh, to the rest of the, of the book. But we, we, we've got quite a lot of work to do. But this is just the basics, bringing it in to the template and then uh, seeing how we can then, um, you know, use our styles to make this appear as we want it. We don't want you to use these primary colors. These are put in there deliberately so that, um, you know, we, we want you to change it. This is the point. The colors are there simply to indicate the structure, just to give you a very good idea of what you've actually got on the screen. More on that as we, as we go through this project, but that's really from XML into InDesign.